Hello, I'm Antonio Neves, and this is 3 Minute Ad Age, your daily video news show. In a dramatic change from past years, NBC will launch just four new programs this fall, and only four more in the first half of 2009. That scaled back programming schedule reflects the general turmoil in the television business. Ad Age television editor Brian Steinberg. This is really all about ratings. We're seeing audience declines in many top ad categories that people like to target their shows at. So as such, the networks have to save a lot of money. They're going to roll out fewer programs, launch them more strategically, and try and create better advertiser alliances with them when they roll them out. It's our understanding that at least through middle of March, uh, the top 18 to 49 category is down in double digits at most networks and overall. I think Fox is doing better than most because of American Idol and some of the other programming. The writer strike has definitely hurt the networks in the first quarter, and we'll have to see if audiences come back in the next couple of months. And according to the latest data, primetime ratings for 18 to 49 year old viewers were down 17.2% for NBC, 24.2% for CBS, 17.6% for ABC, and 5.7% for Fox. In other news, tobacco giant R.J. Reynolds lost a big one in Congress this week. A House subcommittee voted 38 to 12 to turn tobacco regulation over to the Food and Drug Administration. That followed the Senate's passage of a similar bill, moving the issue a big step closer to becoming a reality. And that reality would allow the most draconian curbs on advertising ever imposed on a consumer product by the U.S. government. Reynolds, which ran national TV ads against the legislation, was joined in its battle by various advertising industry groups. They object to any regulations that limit advertising for any consumer product. In this case, the FDA would be empowered to ban the use of color and imagery in most tobacco advertising. It would also ban the use of flavoring in cigarettes, except menthol. In a statement immediately after the subcommittee vote, an R.J. Reynolds spokeswoman said the company believes Congress should be more concerned about prescription drugs than cigarettes. And for our last story of the day, it's all about product placement. Research by an Australian academic group questions the supposed superiority of reality show product placements. The study was conducted at the Ehrenberg Bass Institute for Marketing Science at the University of South Australia. It examined more than 1,000 primetime brand placements in 11 U.S. broadcast and cable networks. Now, contrary to widespread perceptions, researchers found that reality shows don't have more product placements than any other kind of shows. They also documented that the duration of product exposures in reality shows is no longer than in other types of TV fare. In fact, comedy shows have three times more dual mode placements, where the product is presented both visually and verbally. Overall, the Australians concluded that U.S. reality show product placements were, quote, spectacularly average. And that's it for this three-minute adage. Thanks for being with us. I'm Antonio Neves at Advertising Age in New York.